this needs to be remembered and it needs to be reminded through generations of basically yeah what went on we just care about the result <laughs> so it's remem yeah. remembering the dead remembering the suffering remembering the, the people of today yeah that yeah, you know, today soldiers. That's what it's all about: remembering everything and not forgetting, and keeping it in the forefront of people's minds. Did you have relatives? Obviously, you had relatives that fought in the the Great War. My grandfather was really RAF, the British one, um, based in Darwin. It was a Spitfire okay. mechanic, which is what brought me here. And um, as it, yeah, so he was, he was here in World War Two. And um, that's, it, that's, what, that's, what, that's what puts me in Australia and here today. It's, awesome. um, it's a strange feeling because you're there to, to remember and you have moments where there's some sadness uh, but then there's moments where you're proud of what these men have done and then there's moments where you feel like puffing your chest out and stepping up to the plate because they did that for us. So there's almost like a sense of obligation. Right. You haven't done. Um, but essentially it's it's a memory. That's what we're yeah. there for. And we do. Other was a prisoner of war, three and a half years. Um, he would not have come home if it wasn't for the atomic bomb. Um, and I would have missed out on that. So I have a real issue with nuclear um, arms in the sense that if it wasn't for one of those I would never have seen my grandfather mm. um, but then when you, you look at, at the wartime experience it's a collective trauma that's going on not only in the participants in wartime but also the people who are left behind for example my grandmother didn't know where my grandfather was and the correspondence that came to her was three, six months out of date. So can you imagine that as a as a mother of two young girls, where the girls, her husband and her girl's father, somewhere overseas, and all you know is that they're a prisoner of war. You know, that, that type of trauma is, yeah. is not isolated to the participants on the battlefield, you know. It's, yeah. It's a... It's a Especially hearing stories from all the camps in Japan and the way people were treated. Yeah, um, the, the prisoner of war program by the Japanese was not just isolated to Japan. Uh, there was uh, Korea um, and all through that um, Southeast Asian peninsula. Um, particularly, the most famous to us is Hellfire Pass, um, which is uh, part of the Thai Burma Railway. Um, which was to provide a railway between I think, India and Singapore for supplies. And the Japanese had managed to get the plans that had been surveyed by the English something like 20 years prior to put this through. Um, I've been along it in sections, um, most of it's gone. Uh, the foundations are all still there, so the foundations are really good um, and some of the stories that come out of that place is pretty amazing um, you know one of the sort of one of the funniest things I recall is that when they build bridges if the Japanese engineers weren't watching they put in balsa wood instead of right yeah yeah so the train had come over for a test run and the bridge would collapse yeah and the prisoners just thought that was great because <laughs> of sabotaging so um, but yeah no those guys went through hell hmm how, how can you how can you reconcile that? You can't. But, um, no. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.